Broken Worlds, which we're using to run, of course, our exalted game, Skeleton Keys. And this is episode 14, the last episode of the actual play. There is one more episode after this, listeners, and it will be just kind of the conclusion, the kind of concluding thing from us. So, we are in May 2018. I'm Devin the Referee, and to my left, we have X playing Y. Nicole playing Tepper Burrell. Kevin is Poison Orchid. All right, team, what did we see last session? Uh, we wound up in a small puzzle hallway that led to four different rooms that we had to connect to four different eye sockets. Or we had to find four different eyes that went to four different eye sockets to unlock the next area. You did. You found a puzzle room and you solved the puzzle. Mm hmm. Other things may have happened, but that was the more important part. You also threw people down a hole with, with a rope attached to them. They volunteered. You know, by signing up for my gang, they volunteered. By dying, they volunteered. Well, they didn't die. One of them did, but that no, was hardly... they're ghosts. Oh, yes. They're ghosts. Okay. So, you have in front of you a door. You're in that corridor room made of marble, like the, the, the intersection. The cylindrical floor tile rose up to reveal a door frame. The door has no knob or anything. It's just a push open door. Uh, and there it is. And there we are. There we are. We open the door. You open the door. It goes to darkness from the side you're looking in. Well, we're used to this at this point. I guess we'll just walk in. Yep. All right. Wait a minute. I have a better song. Let me pause. There we go. You guys fall. And then you eventually land in a pile of... Uh, a pile of coins. Oh. A large pile of coins. They're partially slagged and melted together. They seem to be made of iron and silver. Not exactly the softest landing, but no. Uh, but there's like a, it's, it like you know shifts and stuff. Also, that's interesting because, well, no, that makes sense. A lot of the people that were here probably guild factories made silver. So that makes sense. There you go. So I was like, we don't use like coins like this. What are they doing? <laughs> right. So, you are in a room that is lit by fire. Not open flame, though some of it's open flame, by the burning of things. This is a large vault. You know, there are columns everywhere that, that go high to the ceiling. There are braziers burning, uh, filling the place with smoke. And there is melting metal everywhere. There are statues of like beautiful people, fascinating individuals doing interesting things. And there are cascades of molten silver and gold pouring out of their faces, pouring from the ceiling above like a waterfall, collecting in basins and just burning, the air itself catching fire. And that illuminates all of this. This place is covered in treasure. I guess this is the, uh, sacrifice room. Huh. Don't know how they got the stuff down here, but... By the barrel full. <laughs> all the statue's eyes are closed. There are plates made of jade, there are plates made of marble and stained glass lining the walls and ceilings. They all have eyes, single individual eyes that have been closed. I am picking up a theme here for the roll. What do we know about the roll, actually? Like, was there any, since, you know, he was down here. So little. So little. It's about rich people avoiding consequences, so it's probably that eyes are closed because they're not seeing. Mm. Like, people are turning a blind eye, kind of thing. Huh. Uh, a fair point. Uh, as you guys are kind of walking through this large area, like, it's, it's a large, you know, vault, and there's, like, steps leading down, at least down to, like, more plateaued areas. It's almost like this is, like, a, like a cave made out of polished stone. Yeah, there's just from the ceiling, like from a ceiling you can't even see, just entire waterfalls of molten metal pouring down, splashing into cisterns that are going through runnels and stuff and spraying everywhere. Uh, there's wind from the different kind of heat 
differences and like kind of the, the, the back blasts going on. And every once in a while you see like uh, small like clouds or drifts of actual printed money. Paper? Yeah, like guild, like like currency vouchers. Oh, like, the guild uses. Uh, even the realm uses. It. The realm has cash. Really? Huh. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Can't haul around that. jade all the time. Pe- peasants. It's illegal for peasants to use jade. Oh right. I forgot about that. They have to trade it for cash. That's literally what it's called. And there's just drifts of it, like kind of just blowing on the wind. Uh, as you walk by, there's a large bathtub made of mother, made of actual like pearl, like a giant like Western pearl that's been carved out and made to a crystal. Mm-hmm. And there are statues of like servants with their eyes stitched together and their hands bound, holding it up, and it's overflowing like its sink's been plugged with gold. I'm just gonna hold out in my hands and kind of catch paper money in my hands, <laughs> flip through it. Yeah, this stuff is worthless. Hmm. The Empress makes uh, her children, like the, the, the dragon-blooded houses, exchange their actual jade for paper money to be used to buy, like, goods and services, like food and, like, paying wages and stuff. They're not allowed to use jade for it. Wait, her children aren't? Yeah, like, realm dynasts, what they have to do is they have, they, they have to pay for those services to peasants in script. And the exchange rate from jade to script is not generous, and the exchange rate from script to jade is ten times worse. It's a one-way street. What the fuck, mom? It goes into her bank. It ke- keeps her rich, so no one can get enough money to out, you know, money her. Economics, baby. <laughs> Your uh, queen mother certainly is something, isn't she? It's a way to keep the realm going. Hmm. What are the dates on? Like, are these dated or? Yeah, they're dated by ages and stuff, and a lot of it's old, some of it's newer. Hmm. There's there's a variety. I'm trying to figure out if there's anything, like, any date that goes past when the rule would have been shut down. Oh, yeah, definitely, because that's how cash works. You, you could have, like... Oh, like, afterwards, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Most definitely. That's a little strange. Do you think people come here and still sacrifice money? Yeah, it happens all the time. Huh. Oh, yeah, I guess rural cultists would still exist. They just, um, presumably aren't getting as much as they wanted hmm. from it. I wonder if they, they can simply make a sacrifice anywhere and it shows up here. There's a lot of examples of people coming into here and throwing all their stuff into the money pit. Hmm. <laughs> but not this pit, there's pits up in the campus. Ah. Where they just burn their money or throw it in. And it would appear here, because that's how worship works. Yeah! Hmm. It'll take quite a bit to cart this all out of here, won't it? Which we will do, of course. I think there's enough here to possibly save the consulate. Ooh. And then some. Yeah. Uh, there are weapons on racks, but they've been bejeweled. There's clothing, and it's spun from, like, silks and fine art. Or, like, fine, like, materials. There's art, there's furniture. Uh, as you're walking by, you see an entire pagoda. Like, like an actual, like, outdoor... You know, you hang out in here and pray pagoda. Crashed on its, like, side, basically. Um with, like, coins spilling out of it and a half-buried jade lion. Jesus. Oh. We're all going to be rich, aren't we? I suppose. Presumably there's... And there's, like, embers and stuff burning in front of you and that smoke still. This place is on fire mm-hmm. because of all the stuff going on. We're not in the central room yet, though. Hmm. Uh, as you keep, like, I presume you're moving down as you're going, it, it essentially, like, you can see in the distance a lot of light around a central room area. Orchid just kind of reaches up onto the higher shelves and areas and kind of peels money off and throws it back to his gang. Oh, yeah, they're, they're just showering them with whatever he finds. Oh, yeah, they're doing, they're doing, the, they're swimming in money. They're having a great time. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll just keep going towards the central area. But there's one. One of your goons, who's like, they're having money fights with each other. They're like picking up half of his money and throwing it at each other. Uh, he uh, falls flat first on his face and is dragged into a coin pile, screaming. Shit. Everyone um, should form up. There's money monsters in here. Blow the coins away from there, if you would, please. Alright, you blow the coins away. There he is. He's being dragged into the pile. Can I grab him? Alright, you can grab him. Start pulling him out. 
Is it only half of him? No, no, it's... it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to attack what's holding him. What is holding him are segmented links of jade and silver coins coiled around like a serpent's tendril uh, around his midsection, pulling him in. Going to destroy those. Sure, go for it. Uh, if you're trying to pull him out, might. If you're trying to pull him out, do might. Hmm. All might. What's, uh, I'm assuming it's plus body? Might is, yeah, it's plus body. Got over ten. And you were... Attacking the links. Yeah, alright. Reach out through vile. Well, what did you get? Four... I got a seven. Oh, it's, it's fine. It's a success. <laughs> all right, you're able That's to pull. I actually forgot that I have plus three to body, so I'm actually pretty strong. <laughs> you're pretty small. Yeah. All right, you're able to pull him and the creature out. It is a large bow constrictor made of coins, uh, and when you attack it, it kind of dislodges from the pile. So he's still caught, but he's not being dragged under to be, you know, crushed and eaten. Uh, when you move more of the coins away, there's more like skeletons underneath. They just crushed skeletons. It, uh, its fangs are made of like sharpened uh, jade talents. Its eyes are rubies, and the inside of it drips with like molten metal. And it's made of like coins that are assembled together. All right, money golem. Um, is all the ground covered in money? Yeah, there's money. There's coins everywhere. All under our feet. Yeah, like sand, like sand in a in an Egyptian tomb. We should get a large thing. Like, if there's a talented gene here, that's great, but preferably something lighter than that. And everyone should stand on that instead of on the coins. Because the coins are things that people can drag you under with. The pagoda. Yes. Climb oh. on top of that and get your bows out. Yeah, the guys start going there and they hear a roaring sound. Like, not a roaring sound, but a growling sound. Is it alive? Uh, oh, no. Oh, the lion. No, not the lion. Okay. On top of the pagoda, with, sh with honed sharp claws and growling fangs, is a... Tiger made out of paper money. A paper tiger. Set fire to it. <laughs> yes, paper tiger is a reference. Look up the uh, term. It's like, a, it's like a term. No, we don't set fire to it. It's made of money. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. But she does say, he's just like, no, wait, don't set fire to it. We need that. We. Do you have to have it? We have to have money. <laughs> So yes, threats are starting to emerge from the lair. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you looked up Paper Tiger. Yeah. There you go. So, what do you all do? Your men are cornered on all sides by monsters. <clears throat> Likely your wind abilities would serve well against a paper being, yes? Yes. I will take on the snake. Okay. Alright, what do you guys do? I'm going to... Just... How far away is the tiger? He's on the pagoda? Yeah. I'm just gonna, like, one blast him. Just, just straight up. Go for it. See how that works. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine. So yes, nine. Sure. Uh, the tiger leaps down onto one of the guys. He starts climbing with its back legs like cats do, and you're able to wind blast the tiger off, and it kind of just bursts apart into cash. Okay. That guy's been gored on the ground. He's holding his stomach in. Well, no. I was going to roll for the forceful, but it, is it like... It's gone. Okay. Forceful is what did it. Use might to plaster his wounds down. <laughs> Did you yell that? Because one of the guys starts grabbing fistfuls of cash and like plastering. Like, you gotta plug stomach. up the. You gotta plug up the cut. <laughs> <laughs> plug it with money. With trash. It's basically trash. So one guy's holding them in and like giving you the thumbs up. Okay. Uh, a few more paper tigers are showing up behind you. Okay. You got very attack though. I was gonna say. <laughs> um, but there's guys. Meanwhile, around. you with the serpent. So is that guy too. It's crushing him. All right. What'd you get? What's up? Oh, did you? Oh, sorry, you haven't rolled. Oh yeah, I did attack it. Just now? Oh no, earlier that was yeah, earlier. Yeah, you have heard it earlier. Yes. Yeah. So what are you doing now? 
Alright, I'm going to run up with my with my jug and just smack it on top of the head to try to shatter it. Alright, go for it. Yeah, while also having my men like yeah. deal from Shooting the distance. Shooting and yeah. stuff. Throwing rocks at it. Four. Eight. Eleven. Oh, yeah. Alright, you're able to dismember it uh, and save your guy. Perfect. He, like, scrambles away from the money and stuff, pockets some of it, and, like, gets back <laughs> in with the group. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have them um, take shelter under the gazebo, pagoda. or pagoda, and start using their arrows to deal with everything. Sure. As you're doing that, one of the statues that was holding up a um, an anvil, like, like it's an anvil that, like, money was being forged on or, like, smelted on, uh, starts to kind of, like, look with its closed eyes down to where they are and starts to kind of lean back with the anvil it's holding to heave it down. Uh, what are you doing, Nicole? Paper tigers. Um, I am going to try to get them away from the other guys. I'm going to try to lure them a bit away, and then I'm going to attack. Area attack. Alright, you're running around the tigers, and I'd love to line them up so well they'll do the least amount of damage. Yeah. Go for it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine? Alright. You're able to disperse them. Uh, like just blow them apart with your area and your forcefulness. Uh, but you take two wounds. Oh. As like as you get knocked like one and two, the third one uh, jumps on you and starts to, like try to gore you in the neck. How many wounds did you say? Two. Oh. Okay. Or like two arm that you take away from your stamina. Yeah. Kevin, that statue. Looking like it's gonna crush your guys. All right, Orchid uh, pulls his cloak over himself and kind of disappears into a whirling... Uh, it's basically his cloak was flying towards it. Yeah, like the Tatari in uh, Melting Blood. Yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> and I'm going to appear next to it, and when he like reappears, he flourishes with his cloak to try and slice it in half. All right, go for it. 10, 11, 12, 13. Nice! All right, uh, you're able to knock it back off its edge. It doesn't get to, like, when it throws an anvil down, it just kind of hits near the pagoda and sends, like, a money drift going down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Coins rolling and clattering, you know, art being displaced. Perfect. How much damage do you do? Two. All right. Uh, Nicole, what do you do? You see this happening. That statue is, uh, like, out of its face hole, like its mouth and its nose and its ears, molten silver's pouring out, and it looks like it's going to pick up something heavy to huck again. I'm going to hmm. how big is it? Uh fifteen feet tall. Oh wow, okay. Um yeah. I'm just gonna straight up like run up it and try to like you said molten stuff's coming out of it? Yeah. I don't wanna touch the molten stuff. Probably not. Yeah, no, no. Hey, if I wind blast it though, it might um solidify the stuff and I might fuck with it. Sure. So I'm going to attack and also do that. Sure, you're gonna try and cool it down. Yeah. Go for it. Oh no. Um, three, four, five, six. All right, you uh, run up it and it grabs you and uh, hurls you um, into the pagoda with the guys. Kevin, two arms coming to your gang. Okay. I am going to uh, block that with my armor. I got suspended armor. All right. So yeah, you crash into the gang and like crumple under them, but you're not harmed. That gang sure is. Yeah, his uh, root, the roots from under his cloak, kind of bury under the gold and appear as like a kind of basket in front of them, yeah. so it catches you. Perfect, Kevin. What do you do? That statue's getting ready to come at uh, your guys. They're under your supervision. Yeah, it's it's on like a pile of gold, right? Yeah, everything's on gold here. It's walking along. All right, I'm going to slide down and use my cloak to uh, try to topple that gold hill over so it loses its balance and falls. Sure, go for it. Okay, what would this be as a bowl? Are you trying to topple it? Yeah. Toppling it. Oh, I know exactly what that is. That's a, um, let me pause. We're gonna come back. Kevin has decided to reach heaven through violence to try and just destroy it with the fall. Yeah, cut its legs off. There you go. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And how much damage is that? Two. Yeah, you're able to sweep its feet. It falls and it breaks itself on the sliding pile of gold and shatters. Hmm. Gold and silver pour out of it in a oozy, melting pile. 
Excellent. Nothing else seems to be approaching you guys. All right, I'm going to use my uh, robes to slice into further bits, just in case. Good plan. Good plan. Okay. All right. Is the pagoda one of those ones where people can carry it? Yes. Or no, that's a palanquin. This is like a thing you put on your property just to you know sit in or pray. Like a hmm. Yeah, it's like a gazebo. How big is it? Bring up the whole three or four people. And it's made of like solid metals and stuff. Not big enough. Then. Okay. What is your plan, gang? Do we know where we have to go now? Like, There's a pretty yeah. clear way. The room is set up to lead you into a, where the most important is. All right, let's keep going then. All right. So you guys continue forward continue down you see in the distance some more of those creatures every once in a while popping up but none of them are approaching you uh and eventually the kind of steps leading down can lead to a kind of uh dock or like a pier and the pier uh drops down to nothing and kind of just just offset from the pier chains are coming from the walls heading down and holding on to a large swinging platform at the bottom or like not at the bottom, but like below, like suspended. Hmm. And let's see. So suspended on that platform is a large Greek style temple, like roof, four columns. The columns are carved to look like people covering their eyes and like fleeing from the temple itself. Um, there is a, a large crater um, in the middle of the temple that looks like it was carved in. And there's a falling star, and it's still burning. Pull down. On top of it, sun bathing, bathing like some sort of obscene lizard, is a large draconic entity. Uh, it's made out of pouring, flowing wine. Uh, it has molten silver for scales, and it's held together um, <laughs> like like it, it, it's almost like a scarecrow. And its bones are made up of what looks like wealthy people and rich people and kings and princes and queens uh, all holding each other and like fused together with like twine and thread made out of like, you know, smelted gold. Its skeleton is made out of the rich. It does not look like a, uh, an Asian serpentine dragon. It looks like a Western dragon. Huh. I'll let you in on a secret. Its name is Moor. I see. Yeah, it's bathing on this large comet. Made of wine, silver, and rich people. I like it. How do we get down there? Is there an obvious way, or...? You can climb the giant cables. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like the simplest way. Probably going to have to fight it. Hmm, you think? It is a god, most likely. That is the rule, do you think? Probably, or just the final guardian. You guys can tell, kind of from the, the, the way the, the room is set up and the spirituality of it, that that is the man's core down there. Like, the guy is? No, like the Okay, temple yeah, that, that's what I thought. We may be able to converse with it, at the very least. Alright. Can try. All right, yeah, we're gonna climb the uh, chains over there. All right, you climb the chains down. And you're on the temple grounds. So it's in the center, and it takes up a lot of space. And there's probably oh, I don't know, thirty meters around it that isn't the dragon that you can kind of walk on. That's the rest of the temple. Hmm. The rest is just goes down to nowhere. It's lounging and basking. Shall we approach it? Yes. You should do the talking. You're better at that than I am. Oh, thank you. I shall try then. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll walk up to it. Okay. It doesn't notice you. Hmm. It's just too self-involved, I guess. It's resting and sleeping like a lizard would. Hmm. Just push it off the edge. Right? I'll uh, clear my throat. 
Doesn't respond. Let's activate the meds while he's not paying attention. Not how it works. <laughs> I'm not going to touch it, because that would be... Is there like a gong or a bell? Yeah, there's art around if you want to make a lot of noise. Yeah. Without breaking it, because this stuff is ours now. <laughs> so yeah, a decorative bell or something. I'll just hit that. Yeah, there's a bell, like from a church. <laughs> it uh, it starts shifting. Those scales lift up and down, almost like they're like you know still wet. Mm -hmm. like, uh, like, not wet, but like still... Um, Unformed, and uh, its head kind of like s like slowly moves and opens up to like see you. Um, it doesn't have eyes, but it opens its mouth. Its mouth is full of rending fangs and teeth, but the teeth are odd. Some of them are made of swords. Some of them are made of jagged gems. Some of them are made of skulls, like skulls that have been like anointed and like you know have like inscriptions and like you know been properly buried as if they were wealthy some of his teeth are made out of teeth that have been capped with gold and silver like they were pulled out of someone's uh, corpse after they died huh some are made of like elephant ivory and like tiger claws and stuff okay so yeah it's looking at you may I assume I'm speaking with the rule you may but it would make you a fool. Oh, so you are not he then. I am more. Th than what? Than everything. Ah, yes, yes, dragons, yes. You are the guardian of this manse. No. The owner? Yes. Mine. Let's see. Did you come here after the cult was called? No. Hmm. Looking around at the skeletons, is there any. Is one of them, like, more important? Or. Like, is there. Does there seem to be a Just a myriad one? of people that are, like, stitched into them to make them a thing. Hmm. Can I use a. Can I, because they're dead, and I'm a Lord of the Dead, can I kind of look into them and see what the fuck happened to them, or like what the purpose of this was? Uh, it looks like he eats ghosts and incorporates them into his body for fun. Ah. He's that kind of evil. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it you do here? This is my place. Whatever I please. Hmm. Which does seem to involve a lot of... Sleeping, I assume? Hoarding? I'm an earner. I earn and I rest because I deserve it. Hmm. What have you done to earn all this, then? I've been powerful. I see. I've had wealth, so I've earned more. Hmm. I see you. Can I try to figure out what kind of thing this is? Like, it's not just a dragon. What is this? Oh, uh, mind. What? Wait. What? Are, what are you gonna rack your brain with? What are you gonna? What are you gonna use to figure this out? What, uh, what, I'm very what well educated, your... and I've also pretty well traveled. Also, right. he's a dragon. Mind. He is also a dragon. With that, uh, sure. Um. What's my mind score? So I got an eight. This is a demon. A demon. Kind of demon. You don't know. This is a demon. Huh. It's a thing from Malpheus. Well then, I guess I... Sign language yet? Right? Like we'll, what? It'll be like, x on the even day. <laughs> and demons don't need to be summoned. They can just appear up here, right? Yes. Yeah. They totally can. Hmm. He's probably not a demon of the first circle. He's 
probably not like a blood ape or an Yoma. Second circle? Maybe. What's your name? You said, mm. sorry, he said that already. I forgot he said his name was Moore. That's a stupid name. Uh, it's not a stupid name. It's actually a pretty great name for a money guy, but. Uh. I just imagine Peter's money cat. <laughs> hmm. I mean, we have no real reason to negotiate with this guy. He's just kind of a, right? a thing guarding uh, the mans we want. He's not even guarding it. He's just, like, claiming squatter's rights. It's like, fuck you. You're a demon. You know what we want. <laughs> How long have you been here? Long enough. Why you do like those simplistic answers? Well, one moment. I need to confer with my friend here. Shall we just... I mean, there's no reason not to. It's not a god. It no, feel it's good. a demon. I kind of assumed it was the rule. I suppose not. Simply something that came in here after. Yes, yeah, it seems like it's just squatting. There is no worse offense. <laughs> You're squatting in your house and everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, is there something we can collapse on this guy or something? We don't want to damage the map. So. I actually set this up to be a thing we can collapse on. Like the temple, and there's like things, and if you can get him into the combat area, there's all those statues and stuff. This is supposed to be a dynamic fight arena. Yeah. We don't want to damage the uh, actual mats though, because that would be... Yeah. Hmm. Is there a way we could cause it to erupt on him? Without destroying it, like causing it to activate, influenced or doing clever stuff, but like that would be part of the combat. Hmm. That will definitely start. What this whole arena is built to be a playground. For yeah. Him. Before we attack him or start shit with him, I'd like to figure out how the mats flows and what's connected to it. And uh, this temple, the meteor. Um, you know, there's various little pagodas and shrines all around here that are, like, built to harness the geomancy of the place. There's vents and stuff. It's like that stupid scene in the Third Hobbit where there's the whole goldsmithing RPG action-adventure scene. Where the where the dwarves are totally immune to heat. It's just, Yeah, it's just this whole thing. Yeah. That's what this whole treasure vault is. I suppose if we get in front of the vents, we could hurt him. Yeah, probably. I Yeah. We should strategize. Where can we lead him? Definitely just wanna, up in front definitely of him. Definitely want to yes. get up there. Kind of have my gang members in front of me just kind of murmuring, peace making small talk. Yeah. Um, if we... There's that giant monster you collapsed. If he's still filled with liquid goo, melted, mm. filled with liquid stuff, mm. we can always pour that down on this guy. There were also vents everywhere. Pouring that, if we could get him under one of those. Just kind of glance over my men at the dragon. Back back down. Yeah, if we just uh we wanna get your men up there first, presumably, because if they're down here when oh. yeah. we also have all these chains everywhere. They're holding it up. There's other ones though, aren't there? Like other chains hanging, or is it just the four? There's chains everywhere. Yeah. There's everything everywhere. It's a, it's a very open-ended combat. Mm, we could try to bind him down. Hmm. Though, if he has the breath associated with dragons, we might have an issue. It's also very liquidy. Hmm. What if I tried to resurrect the dead, holding him together? Do it. They might slow him down long enough for us to uh, strategize elsewhere. Yeah. Even if you can't resurrect it, you can, like, control them, so... Hmm. Yeah, try. Alright. Let's get my men up there first. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, we'll just... If, if he's not gonna, like, start attacking us right away, um... I wanna get my men back up onto the other shelf. Okay. All right. I want to resurrect the uh, dead covering this guy's body. 
All right. Uh, let's pause. All right. We're back. What are you guys doing? As your men are like quickly fleeing the scene with grappling hooks and stuff just to crawl away. Mm-hmm. I'm going to resurrect the corpses. Um, Using your occult powers? Yes. All right. So that sounds like you're doing a cutie with a power die. Go for yep. it. As your animal bonfire burns. Yeah, he uh, reaches into his uh, jug, or he takes a bunch of those seeds and pulls them out of his, under his robes and drops them into the uh, jug. And when he pulls them out, they're pulsing with, you know, eldritch energy. Gotcha. And Cutie is with mine, so that's 11. So yeah, he throws them uh, so that they latch onto the various skeletons holding this guy together. And All they, right. So with an 11, you get a bunch of bonuses for that acuity, and you start, yeah, like some of the corpses start moving and writhing in him, and he is like, oh, oh, it's happening. This is it. Uh, let me see that. Acuity. So you have three hold, and you can spend them as you want. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, he starts getting up and freaking out, and uh, he starts roaring, and lava vents in the uh, dungeon or in the, the treasure room start to burst and like molten gold starts to come out of like flutes and holes in him. Yeah, he sounds pissed off as he's kind of, you know, jerked and scratched at from the inside. What do you do, Nicole? Hmm. He's still there on the first platform, though, right? Yeah, he's still down there with you. I'm going to run up the chain because I don't want to be down here and we want him to come up here. So I'm going... You can go up the chain easily as well, right? Oh, yes. yes. Okay, I'm, I'm like, am I abandoning you here? Is this gonna... Okay. Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to run up that chain and I'm going to try to uh, topple that jade tiger onto his head. Because jade is very fucking heavy. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to really blast that on him. Alright, sounds like reach out through violence. Um, more than 10. Okay, what kind of tags does your attack have? My tag, my attack, rather, um, disarms. I don't know if he can be disarmed. Okay. Uh, he's reeling, and also, um, area if I want it to be, but he's one creature, so yeah. Um, Is that it? Yes. How much damage again? I do two damage. It's also forceful, so it does knock him flying. Can I make it knock so he's up on, up on here? How would that happen? I don't know how that would happen, logically. Might not, <laughs> might not yeah. work out. <laughs> Alright, yeah, you uh, smash into him. Uh, you smash that jade line into him, and he starts bellowing. He sounds pissed off. He starts getting up and starts to, like, fly. Kevin... All right. All your men have their weapons drawn and are getting their bows and arrows and shit ready. All right. Orchid reaches into that jug again and pulls out a bigger seed. And this one he rams into his chest and starts to turn into that giant monster form of his. Cleric beast? Cleric beast. And from there, he grasps one of those hanging chains with his claws and tries to rip it down from the ceiling so that he can uh, use it like a whip and try to lash it onto the dragon using the skeletons to, like... Tie into place. Hold on to him? Yeah. Alright, go for it. Reach heaven through violence. Nine. Nine? Yeah. Oh boy. Alright, how much damage is that? And what are its tanks? Uh, it's. Three damage. And its tags are... He's reeling, right? Yes, I was going to mention that. Yeah, he's still reeling. So he gets a plus one from that as well. So, so four damage. Four. Okay. He will spend armor. Okay. And uh, the tags... Uh, none. Because it's my silk, steel, whatever. Yeah. Armor reduces by three, right? Um, I don't know. I think it's by three. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have armor, so... I want to cool <laughs> All right, you lash into it with that chain, and it bites into his, like, scales and, you know, pulls him around a bit. Um, oh, he'll do that. Uh, he responds by, uh, his mouth opens and, like, 
uh, gets kind of veiny and hardens, and he fires out a lozenge of uh, molten jade at you. Okay. Uh, the jade hits nearby and detonates against you and your gang. Okay. Uh, he used a counter move. Um, you are crippled. Which is to say he's taken out your legs and a lot of your gang members' legs from the shrapnel. Okay. Does it do damage? Or? Oh, yes. It does uh, three. Okay. I'm going to use one of my holds to reduce the damage by one. Smart. Uh, it's also brutal, so if you have armor, it'll uh, do one over on top of the armor. I don't have armor. I spent it already. Okay. Oh, wait. I have uh, more acuity as well, actually. Okay. Uh, could I have included armor piercing, or can we just do that next? Should we just do that next round? Yeah, if you want to include armor piercing, go for it. Yeah, and also uh, increase a single source of damage to your target by one. So instead Five. of the one he took, he'll take four more. It was, it was already doing four. Yeah, so. he already took one. Yeah. Because of the armor. So I'm adding four more damage to him. Yeah. Yeah. Should I do three more damage? No. Unless you're adding another damage. Yeah, Sorry. Right. Sorry. It, it would have been five in total. Okay, yeah. So. Yeah, so I'm at four more on. Oh my god, this fight might be over way quicker than I thought. <laughs> you can dish out large amounts of damage. Yeah, acuity. Also, his attack is forceful, so it sends you all scattered. Okay. But you guys can't move anymore. No more move actions for you. Okay, that's fine. I've got this chain around him. <laughs> he ain't going anywhere either. <laughs> I guess he's dragging you. Yeah. Like with your broken little legs. <laughs> so he's he's going to start flying. They're covered in molten jade. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Nicole? Um, so he's flying? Yeah, and he's dragging him along on a chain with his broken, twisted legs. I know that this has healing magic. Um... Medicine. Can I use an air blast to... Because molten stuff becomes solid, it's cool. Can I yes. go like... And like solidify some of it so it shoots at him, like funnel now it's funneling at him. You're trying to spray like molten oil. Oh, you're right there. Oh I'm God. holding onto a chain. I'm pretty far away. Actually. Okay, yeah, he should be fine. Yeah, because I'm get, he's like all made of wine and shit. If that like gets hot, it'll like evaporate. I'm assuming it'll fuck him up. All right, go for it. I'm assuming you just reach out and yeah, you're just trying to kill him. Ooh. Um. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Four, five, six, seven. So it succeeds. Yeah, it does. Does two damage. Um, Is it armor piercing? One moment. I don't remember if my stuff is armor piercing. I don't think it is. All right, he'll spend unarmor. Yeah, no, it's not armor piercing. Um, but let me look up forceful again. Sure. You want me to pause? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, it's just rolling for forceful, but he does not get reeling, so it just does the two damage. Okay. So yeah, uh, you tear into more of his scales and whatnot. And that was a seven you got, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he responds uh, by flying up with you dragging behind him, and he does a quick turn, and uh, with Kevin hold with uh, Orchard coin on, he swings Ke Orchard Kid like a wrecking ball into you. And I'm a giant monster right now. Yeah, he's a giant cleric beast monster. He goes in for what's called a shock attack, which you take three. Uh, and you are stunned until someone spends their turn on stunning you. Okay. So he, uh, he knocks at you and sends you flying. I'm at one hit point. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's the reason these battles are over so quickly, is because everyone has low hit points. You need armor! Yeah. That would only stop one hit, so... <laughs> you have stamina, it's fine. He, I mean, it's you, not... You burned through that. Yeah. <laughs> I did, so you're still alive. Plus, it's really hard to die. <laughs> There's like three rolls involved, and you can still fight. <laughs> Unless you fuck up. Kevin, what do you do? You were just used to maul your assist, your friend. I was going to say assistant. <laughs> but you heard say sister. Alright, he's going to use one of his hands to grab onto one of those chains as he's flying about. And he's going to try to use the other to swing him into one of those uh, molten lava flows. Like, are you grabbing a chain and you're like, 
Yeah. Like, trying to suplex him like uh, a Captain America in the helicopter. Yeah. Yeah, more vines are up from under his uh, cloak and uh, climb up the chain to uh, reinforce it. Go for it. Three. Seven. Seven. What kind of damage? Three. And you still have AP? Like, do you have still have a cutie to spend? No. All right, he will spend armor because he only has three wounds left. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, you grab and drag him into one of those uh, like statues holding a vase, pour him molten metal, and spray him down. He starts screaming and like lands on the ground near your gang, shaking that stuff off. What a dick! Yeah, spraying them with it. Ah, oh, fuck. Nicole. I'm stunned. Oh no, we gotta look up stun to see how we can get you unstunned. They think there'd be a roll or something. Yeah, let's look it up. There probably is. Uh... Oh no, someone else has to take an action to help them. Absolute bastard runs who's been here the whole time oh, yeah. and didn't just escape. And like, uh, kind of like picks you up and just like punches you in the face a few times <laughs> until you're, uh,. Your chakras are realigned. Until no, until you wake and snap out of it. <laughs> are you are you snapped out of it yet? Yeah, I'm gonna throw him off. Yeah. All right, all right. He scrambles back under some gold to hide. <laughs> this is too hot. It's too much. Just shoving money under his shirt. He's like, yes. He's gonna call up his conch shell and fill it full of money. How? Uh, so you got an action. How fucked up does this monster look? It's. Getting there. It has two armor and three wounds left. Armor piercing. Yeah, if you armor can with an armor piercing wound. I don't have armor piercing. Acuity. So next, you can give your next attack, uh... Or someone else's attack, I think. Acuity can be spent on a bunch oh, of Oh, yeah, things. give a single source of damage against your target. One yeah, the yeah. Then Kevin can go in for the Kevin game. That's, uh... I'm flying around like I'm pulling a very angry kite. <laughs> <laughs> Very angry kite. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, I guess I'll roll acuity. I don't really know what that means. You roll mind, and you're basically trying to figure out stuff about it. How are you gonna? You're gonna find weaknesses in it. What kind of weaknesses are you looking for? Um, weak points in its armor, I suppose. Like bear points in its scales. Yeah. It's currently it's got a bunch of screaming skeletons on it. You're like trying to steer him around. Holding onto a giant chain. Do well. I did do well. Oh, okay. I did more than ten. You have three hold now. That you can spend on probably Kevin's stuff or the monster stuff to reduce damage that it's going to be thrown out. Hmm. All right, poison orchard. The uh, the dragon has sprayed itself down as um as um uh, as Vedic Burrell is calling out. The armor! Look at his armored scales! They've all melted off! <laughs> and uh, it looks down, and it looks at you, and it looks like you're playing stuff, and it just picks up a hunk of ingots and throws it at its collection of stained glass murals, so it's all shot on the ground, and starts running towards it with you being dragged behind on the chain. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, was it trying to redeem his armor or something? I was like, oh, wait, no. Because <laughs> it's going to drag you through a field of broken glass. <laughs> I'm not wearing shoes. <laughs> He's like trying to dig his, his broken legs, and he's like, oh, oh no, 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 no. They're like, the bones are like snapping and stuff. Oh. You're like, no, 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 no. Okay, he's going to leap onto a jade ingot that he's going to uh, like snowboard on through the gold <laughs> as he's being dragged, and he's going to hit a hill to try and jump on and rip open enough of a hole in this dragon's back that the skeletons can start crawling in and start tearing him apart from the inside out. Go for it. My alternative one, mm -hmm. like that one's great. I love it. Don't change it. My alternative one, be like you snowboard and try to get enough momentum going so you can spin around his neck a bunch with the chain and just saw his neck off. <laughs> Fuck. How do I get this You have a cutie. You can spend it as the result of this roll come to play. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, thank God he doesn't get a reaction. How much damage do you? Uh, one, two, three. So that's exactly enough to kill it. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is spend one of your QD to make his attack armor piercing. Yes. You do that, 
And, uh, yeah, all, you rip open its spinal column and wh- wine steam starts pouring out. <laughs> oh no, I'm Harvey so Weinstein. drunk. I've never done this trick. Yeah, Harvey Weinstein starts pouring out. <laughs> His hands all gropily. Oh, and Ron Burrell. <laughs> Ron Burrell. <laughs> You'll never work in Hollywood again. Right, that's right. And, uh, yeah, he, it falls apart and dies and doesn't drag you through a field full of broken glass. Thank the gods. <laughs> There's more shoes today. Uh, that sort of just, you know, ends right on the music. <laughs> As everyone kind of takes a breather. Ugh. <sighs> oh. It's, uh, it's quiet as the dragon dies. Is there wine inside this guy? Oh yeah, everywhere. He's made of wine. He's like 50% wine. Orchid just kind of reaches one of those huge hands down and brings out a cup and just... You got your jug. Oh yeah, he just fills There's the jug with that. everywhere. <laughs> just takes a long, long drink. <laughs> Come carry your boss. He's, uh, he's a oh, little he's fucked. fucked. No, they're all crippled. They all have wounds. They all have shrapnel in their legs. That's fine, but so am I. <laughs> I'll start crawling towards you. Okay. Dead silent. I am very hurt. As am I. Let's recuperate at the manse. How are you gonna get there? I mean, I can just like throw him down. I could throw you down. I'm a huge monster. Well, I'm I can not just, sure. I can just walk down. Oh yeah, clean the vents. Yeah. Okay. Cool. There's a as you're walking, you notice that above, swinging from like a chandelier, is a bridge. For what? For the manse, for the thing to connect to the pier. Oh. Oh. Okay. I guess I'll put that down for the uh, less agility of us. <laughs> there you go. You walk to the manse as everyone starts crawling their way <laughs> there, using like sticks and like rods and stuff to prop themselves up. <laughs> How do you claim a manse? It's not really a rules thing, cool. Okay. You just meditate on the manse, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you go and hang out by the burning meteorite. Everyone is, is like breathing and relaxing. People are smoking. <laughs> this was a nightmare. Okay, let's uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's all yours and the consulates. Excellent. I was out of character. I was a little worried about that. I'm like, because uh, like. We want it, but like you might want it. Oh no, like, I hope he he's... doesn't. Okay. Uh, the consulate having this sort of power uh, is really good for the city, so he's totally fine with that. That's true. Also, they don't like um, central authority, so if you start taking like all authority for yourself, the city might just bloom. Yeah. So. He doesn't want to be the leader. He just wants this place to bloom. So. Right. I will uh, claim the mans. As you're like attuning to like the the geomancy of the area and like you know aligning yourself with it, uh, you notice know something. What? All the statues, their eyes are open. Oh, All no. the tiles, the eyes are open. The meteor. The giant eyeball? Yeah, and it's open and staring at you guys. Hey, all of them, I found your eyeball. Oh, wouldn't that be cute? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a large pair of golden burning eyes in the sky above you. The eyelashes and just <laughs> try and close. <laughs> try and close it. <laughs> I want to have another fight. I can't fight right now. <laughs> I'll start shooting little lasers at you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like deflecting them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. All right. Is this gonna be a fight? It sounds like fight. I don't know. It looks creepy. There's two giant burning eyes in the sky looking at you. Maybe it's just an effect of the manse. The manse that you should keep claiming. 
Yeah. Very quickly. There's no quick way to do that. You just meditate. Meditate harder. Meditate <laughs> <laughs> better. Oh, oh my. But yeah, the, uh, you have two eyes staring down at you. What, 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 like, what are they? Just glowing golden eyes? Giant golden eyes. Like, like, those, like the, the very fabric of space, you know, is a face. It's just... Just kind of going to spread my cloak a little to, like, hide my men. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the gold and money and uh, art and stuff starts kind of shifting out of the way, like the Red Sea parting, uh, to reveal like you know a more a more smooth staircase path 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 th- that's unfolding and it looks like a carpet's kind of rolling down it. The carpet kind of ends right at the meteor. very end of it, a door sends up and kind of opens a jar slightly and the eyes are staring at you and they stare back at the door. Like, is it telling us to leave? Or is it, like, announcing the arrival of someone? <laughs> it, it looks like through its body language that they're expecting you to go through that fucking door. I guess I'll do so if that's what sounds logical. If it's just being, being like, leave, bitch, then I'm not going to do it. But if it's more like, this is how you do the thing you want, then I'm going to do it. It's neither of those. But it is the next part of the dungeon. <laughs> Start helping your boss up the stairs. You guys walk up the red, the, the gold and red carpet, carved from, or, you know, spun from silk and gold thread. And there's a door that's slightly ajar. Enter. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. You're in a field. It's a bright blue sky day. There is no sun, but it's a field that goes on forever, like a like a rolling hill. And the door frame is just behind you. It's closed. There's a tree in the middle. It's like an oak tree. There is um, a set of eyes and like a, a distortion in the in the air, shaped kind of like a person, at the tree staring at you. Shall we? I guess we shall. Alright, just gonna start dragging myself with one claw up there. <laughs> Leaving a bloody trail behind you. You arrive, the figure's there. So I'm gonna get out of my mask. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my childhood. <laughs> Does it say anything? Or it's staring at you, two burning eyes. The the distortion that it's kind of in front of looks like what a person looked like if they were run through like a, like TV static or like bad 3D rendering on a broken game cartridge. Like it's constantly flickering polygons and stuff. May we ask who we're speaking to? You speak to the rule. Ah. The Chronophage. The, uh... God of Time. No. And yes. One of them. I am a Deva. Does that mean he's exalted? It's a term you're not familiar with. Yeah. I am not familiar with the term. I am from before the type... I am from before what you would know as the Malphian. I predate the war. Hefty claim. Such is my domain. What are you doing here? I was caught here. 
when a piece of my soul broke off and fell into this shadow world. Did we free it? Is it possible to free? It doesn't quite work that way. But I thought it was an excellent way to reintroduce myself to the conquered lands. It's quite the lofty claim to say that you predate the Titans. I do not predate the Titans. I predate the Malfians. The war. What all existed before uh, the, the Malfians? That's such a that's such a weird claim. Out of character, the Yozis weren't always called Yozis. Hmm. They were called Titans, and they, their servants weren't called demons. They were called Devas, messengers. Hmm. Very specific difference. For him, anyway. Hmm. <laughs> then hmm. you are the one who set up this religion here. This... I sent one of my souls to do that. For what purpose? It amused me. Hmm. I could. And now what will you do? That door is closed. I will simply continue. Let's see, then you redact ownership of this manse. I could do that. Or you could further our relationship. The previous tenants were not as useful as one might imagine. And I've recently lost a second circle day. Oh, is that what that was? They can't all be Octavian. <laughs> he just, you know, everyone's going to name drop Octavian. What would we have to gain by furthering this relationship with ours? I have dominion over time's arrow. For you and the conquered lands, it only flows forward. It only flows towards inevitability and to unrelenting, unforgiving conclusion, cause and effect. I could offer you something a little more robust. Do you tell? It's not something we can hash out down for a brief feeling meeting. Thankfully, we do have a long time ahead of us, then. Do not disturb the Jotun piece that has crashed into the man's. We'll talk later. What do you say? So long as the furthering of this relationship wouldn't be in a subservient role. I don't represent a conqueror. I represent a rebellion of sorts. The war still wage the, the war still rages, even if not all sides are aware. Well, if we have much to gain from this, then I suppose we can leave the manse as is for now. I don't care. You can totally claim it. You were doing that. Hmm. He's just like, don't fucking move that meteor. Oh. <laughs> Dickhead. Why would we do that? It's exactly. the manse. Well, it's not. Oh. It crashed. Yeah, we have no reason to move it. So, no. yes, we will leave it as is for now. And we'll talk later. I'm certain well, we will be around. Later for you. Hmm. 
Very well. He kind of gestures to the door that's open. I guess we'll just leave. Yeah. As you're leaving and you're kind of looking around the horizon, you see other doors and other hymns and other yous entering and exiting and having meetings and leaving, but you're wearing different clothes and like you're in different states of like damage and health and with different people with you. Huh. Just out of sync. Interesting. They weren't there before you agreed to hang out with him. <laughs> Many possibilities. You decide to make a deal with a third circle uh, well, demon, for all intents and purposes. <laughs> yeah, you guys claim the mats. There's a rich treasure in there. Not all of that treasure survives, uh, just because the nature of the mats was sort of sacrificial. Mm. So a lot of it were grave good reflections of other things that kind of failed when you killed the uh, the demon garden it. But there's still a hefty amount of treasure. The, the mats normalizes after you attune to it, so mm. you're able to actually go through it and shit. It's not yeah. so trappy. <laughs> but with this as a campus for the exchange consulate and with the resources inside, you're able to make a sizable change to the nature of Ten Gods Mountain and the political climate. Excellent. What were any of your... Uh, know, what, what were some short-term goals you had uh, surrounding this? Um... Right now this change is in place. Basically, I just wanted my grandma to have a more stable thing going on. I wanted to give the exchange consulate power because that gives her power. And yeah, make this place better. And through this, I want to make it better. Which you definitely can do. Yeah. yeah. And my goals were just to turn the af this afterlife into a heaven. Yeah, this will go a long way making it better. And you'll stop the usury... Uh people from defaulting, and by defaulting they turn into nightmare specters. <laughs> well, you guys accomplished your goal and almost got absolutely waxed by it at the same time. Yes. But, I think that's good. You guys had fun? Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. A nice end to the Ten Gods Mountain saga, to the skeleton keys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then I think here, listeners, we will end the session. We won't even do the move. We're beyond that now. So, I was Devin, Nicole, Kevin, and this is sponsored by Nobody, and this is Skeleton Keys, signing off. Stay tuned next week, or next episode, depending on when you're listening to this, for our conclusion episode. Have a good one.